Here's a question that I get a lot from clients. <clears throat> they want to know what that little thing next to their name, the, web, the name of their website is in the browser bar. So I'm going to teach you how to get one. Okay, so if you see this little red box that says CNN, it's over here too on the tab, CNN. If we go to my iGoogle page, you'll see, hey, Google has one too. There are also a bunch all over my browser interface, okay? Now, if you go to my website, pinkcollarinc.com, boom. It's not just fancy websites that have one. Any website can have one, okay? So here's the pink collar icon, and again, here in the browser bar, the pink collar icon, okay? So this icon is called a favicon, okay? In order to get your favicon, you just need an image that still shows up well, even when it's really small. And a lot of times you can do what we did, which is use a logo element, okay? So first of all, get the logo element that you want to use ready, and I'll show you how to transform it into a favicon. create my actual favicon, the actual file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a command in Adobe Fireworks. As you can see here, this little leaf uh, is one of my client's logo elements, and this is what we're going to use for the favicon. So I just went to where I had this um, image stored, and I just right-clicked, and I said, open with Adobe Fireworks, and then it gave me exactly what you see here. Okay, now a favicon has to be 16 pixels wide and 16 pixels tall. So I'm just going to go down here to these boxes and tell it to be 16 wide and 16 tall. Okay, so you see now it made it exactly the right size. So I'm going to then crop the document. So it's only those 16 by 16 pixels that I want. And then I go up to the commands bar, and one of the commands is export as favicon. So as soon as I do this, I select where I want to put it. I'll select desktop. And I already have one there. It's an older version of this one, so I'm just going to say OK and replace it. OK. And now my favicon is on the desktop. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I've already logged into my cPanel, and cPanel, if most hosting companies use cPanel, and so yours is probably going to look a lot like this. The buttons may be in different places, but chances are you still have a button called File Manager, and so you just click into the File Manager. Let me get my screen so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so in the File Manager, it's probably going to direct me to the root. If yours doesn't look like this, don't worry. Chances are your hosting provider only gives you access to the public HTML folder. That's fine. So if you start off looking like this, that's exactly where you want to be because this is the level at which we want to place the favicon. So make sure that you're in the public underscore HTML folder and upload a file here. Okay, it's going to my desktop, so I'm going to find the favicon that I created. I'm going to open it. I'm going to tell it to overwrite the existing file. Even if there isn't one, it's a good idea to check overwrite the existing and upload it. Now my favicon should be right there. So the next thing you want to do is check and make sure that your favicon is actually showing up in the browser bar. And another good way to check is if you have your own website bookmarked, check your bookmarks list. 
all these little things you see on the left hand side, those are favicons. And check to see if yours shows up. Now, if for some reason yours is still showing a blank space, or in the case of my browser, this little dotted rounded box, it probably means you need one extra step to add a little bit of code to your site. So if what you did so far was successful, great. If you need the extra code, hang on, we'll go over that next. Okay, if you find out that you do need to put a little bit of code into your site to make your favicon show up, it's going to look weird at first, but trust me, it's super easy. You want to go to your website's HTML file. If you're using a Joomla or pretty much any other open source co content management system, you just go to your template manager and then click Edit HTML, and this is what you're going to see. If you're using a different kind of content management system, <clears throat> your path to your HTML file might be a little bit different, but once you get there, <clears throat> this is what you're going to see. Okay, so what I'm looking for is the head section. So here we have the beginning of the head section, and just like in all HTML, the beginning of the section and the end of the section look similar. Okay, here's the end of the head section, except this little forward slash character is what is different. It says close the head section. Okay. So the code for the favicon is already in this website's HTML. And this is that particular code. Don't worry about copying that down because I'll give you that in a minute. I keep a notepad document handy so that these two lines of code are always accessible to me. And here's my little note to myself. Insert before the end head tag, okay? So if I were doing this from scratch, I would just take these two lines of code and copy them and insert them here. I would, I'll tell you what, I'll delete them and do it again. I would literally put my cursor right here before the end head tag and then I would just, whoops, let's try that again. Copy and paste. Okay. And then after you do that, your favicon will show up. Now you can head to the FAQ on the HTML.com. That's T H E h-t-m-e-l-l-e dot com and go to the FAQ and tutorials section to get this exact code. Okay, happy web surfing!